Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Polython Programming Video Log, and today I'm going to talk about two dimensional dot product with two dimensional vectors. So I have a little example program here. I'm not going to go into the code, but I'm just going to talk about some cool stuff you can do with the dot product formula, which you can see right here. Now, this is the 2D version of the dot product formula, but if you want the 3D version, simply add uh, v0.z multiplied by v1.z to the end of it. And the cool thing about 2D dot product is it's basically just 3D dot product when the z values of both your vectors are zero. So effectively, these are 3D vectors. The z value of each is just zero. So here's our formula for 2D dot product. Uh, when we're using it, we can see that the dot product of two vectors that are 90 degrees from one another is going to be zero. Now, the reason for that is because of this formula. We can see that the x value of the yellow vector is going to be 40 multiplied by the x value of the blue vector, which is 0, is going to result in 0. So when we add uh, 40 times 0, which is 0, to 0 times 40, which is also going to be 0, we get 0 and we have a dot product value of 0. doesn't matter which side we're on, so long as the angle is 90 degrees, we get a dot product of 0. So dot product comes in really handy when you're calculating the angle between two vectors. And I'm not going to cover that right now, this is just about dot product itself. So let's go ahead and get to the next cool thing that you can do with dot product right off the bat. So if these two vectors are 90 degrees apart, they're going to be at a dot product of zero. If they're facing the same direction, the dot product is going to be positive. Now, they're going to face the same direction within a 180 degree range. So it's a very broad thing, but so long as they're facing the same direction within that 180 degree range, dot product is going to be positive. If they're facing apart, dot product is going to be negative. And it doesn't matter which vector I'm moving. So long as they're, you know, facing apart or facing together, we're going to be able to tell based on dot product because it's going to be positive when they're facing the same direction or negative when they're facing the opposite direction from one another. So that's another cool thing you can do with dot product. Let me go ahead and refresh the page here, get them back to a good position. The third thing that we're going to do with dot product is talk a little bit about how you use it for projection. I'm not going to go into the exact formula for projection here, but I'm just going to show you how dot product is linked to projection. So projection is basically going to calculate the length of this yellow vector in terms of this blue vector. So you can think of projection as if my mouse pointer was a source of light, casting a shadow from this yellow vector onto this blue vector. If my source of light was right here, perfectly aligned with this vector along the normal of the blue vector, I'm going to cast a shadow from this point directly down to here on the blue vector, and I'm going to cast a shadow from this point directly, well, it's the same point. So I'm going to have a shadow that goes from here to pretty much right about here, and that's going to be projection. I'm going to project this vector in terms of this vector. So I'm going to get the length effectively of this vector along this vector, which is actually pretty useful. I'm not going to go into why, but it's a cool thing you can do with it. And to show that it's the same on both sides, just take a note. Right here where it is, kind of along this grid line, I have roughly 10,000. The dot product is roughly 10,000. It doesn't matter how far out I move it along this line, it's going to be right about 10,000. And grant me that I'm not pixel perfect here and moving the, the vectors around. It's roughly 10,000 along this grid line. If I move it to the other side, it's still going to be roughly 10,000. I got 9,000 here, but if I try to get it really precise, you can see that it's pretty much about 10,000. So if I were to project this, I would be using a point of light over here. It would cast a shadow straight down, hit this, cast a shadow straight down onto my blue line here. And same thing for over here, it would cast a shadow Technically, it would cast a shadow in kind of this direction, like this, but the shadow would start right here, and I would have a magnitude that's directly related to the dot product of the two vectors. So this 10,138 is going to be used to calculate the magnitude of my shadow that was cast from this yellow vector onto this blue vector. So that's some really cool stuff that we can do with dot product. And just to reiterate the shadow idea here, if I go ahead and refresh and get my vectors nice and lined up at a 90 degree angle, if I were to cast a shadow from a point of light that was aligned perpendicular to this right here and in line with this right here, I would cast a shadow 
down a straight vertical line and I would get absolutely no shadow. I would get a, sh a shadow with zero magnitude and that's exactly what we have here. We have a zero magnitude shadow of the yellow vector onto the blue vector. And the same with the blue vector. If I were to cast a shadow from my mouse point here, straight down on this blue vector onto this yellow vector, we'd get a shadow with a magnitude of zero. Now, if I were to move this blue vector out a little bit and cast a shadow from my point, my mouse pointer here down onto the yellow vector, we're gonna get a, a magnitude relative to this 760. And like I said, it's not gonna be the exact pixel perfect value. It's just going to be in direct relation. And you can see that direct re relation here. It doesn't matter which side I'm on, the magnitude stays pretty much the same relative to the other vector. So anyway, that's three pretty cool things you can do with dot product right off the bat. You don't need anything but the dot product formula and you can start putting this to work. Uh, another cool thing I'll show you right here before I, I go is uh, doesn't have to be the same origin. Now these two blue points represent the origin of the two vectors. If I'm facing the same direction, doesn't matter what the origin is, I have a positive dot product. If I'm facing the opposite direction, doesn't matter the origin, I have a negative dot product. So dot product is a really cool thing and I just want to introduce you to some visual aspects of dot product that I use all the time in my vector math. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit about how you can use dot product. Go ahead and leave some comments and have a great day.